storing your RPC endpoint in your application's front-end or client-side code can expose it to the visitors or users of your application. So that's where Endpoint Armor, the new add-on on the QuickNode Marketplace, comes to the rescue. With Endpoint Armor, you can impose rate limits based on methods, you can impose rate limits based on the number of visitors, and you can impose rate limits for overall all the RPCs of your account. To enable Endpoint Armor, just go to your QuickNote dashboard, go to Endpoints, and then click on any of the endpoints and then go to add-ons then navigate or search for endpoint armor once you find it click on explore then install and once it's installed go to the top of the page find endpoint armor click on the menu then click on dashboard and you will be redirected to the endpoint armor dashboard or endpoint armor admin page where you can set up limits and now john will show us how to set up limits and how endpoint armor actually works the idea is what if we provide a url but it's actually a url that has limits on it um, like rate limits method allow list uh, certain method specific configuration so i'm going to show what that looks like um, here's the dashboard that a user is going to come to uh, when they install the add-on, they're going to install the, the Marketplace add-on. Like any other Marketplace add-on, they're going to get a link um, and they're going to sign in, uh, basically get like signed in to a page here. Um, I'm going to disable this for a second to show you what this is originally going to look like. They're going to get a list of their endpoints here. They're going to select the endpoint. Uh, and by default, Endpoint Armor is disabled on all their endpoints. Uh, we don't want to just enable a bunch of URLs on their endpoints without them uh, knowing about it. So they're going to enable endpoint armor. Uh, so I'm going to enable it here. It's a demo endpoint. Um, and this is not going to affect any existing QuickNode URLs. So those can be used as normally. Uh, this is a separate URL that you're going to get. Once you enable it, I guess I'll it again. Uh, you're going to get a separate URL that's secure. So this is the secure um, URL that you have. Uh, so this is a very basic UI uh, idea is just get something working. And um, it's basically a, a JSON file as configuration here. Uh, we have documentation on the right here. That's that's moving to the, the actual official docs. So this is like the main I idea is this uh, configuration file here. Um, and I'm going to remove some of this stuff to start Let's do this. So you can edit it in this little in-app editor kind of thing. Uh, and it's going. You can submit your changes here. Um, so the first thing we have here is a methods uh, a, a methods object here. Um, right now, I have nothing in it. OK, so I'm curling this endpoint. Bump this up. Um, this secure URL with F chain ID. And it's telling me method is disabled. So nothing's enabled by default. Uh, we do this just to reduce the the attack surface, um, you as a user have to go in and you have to actually enable a method. So I can just say at chain ID enabled. Uh, turn comma. Cool, updated. And now I can call it. Life's good. I got a result back. So uh, you might have noticed there's also this section endpoint rate limits. This is a um, just global rate limits. Um, you can also do request per minute, request per hour. Uh, I just have request per second here. Uh, and if I set this to one, so update it, and I do a little uh, hacky low test on this, um, I, my first request went through, uh, and then my second request, we're going to get blocked by quick node, node endpoint armor, too many total requests from endpoint. Uh, and then you know, after a second, we can send it again. Uh, and so you you have this basic like global rate limiting, this. But we also have method rate limiting. So you can actually rate limit a, an individual method. So F chain ID request per second one, but my global endpoint rate limits request per second is 10. So if I set that, I do the same thing. 
and it's going to give me an error back, uh, too many total requests for the method. Uh, and so that's coming from that configuration there. So if I set this back to 10 or something, uh, I can just fire away and get results. That's good. Okay, so we can enable more methods here. Um, and on certain methods, there's actually specific configuration that you can set. So let's just say I set at get logs, uh, which is enabled. We'll just go with that. Good. Yeah. And let me grab the logs here. All right, if it's enabled, I'm good. I can call it, uh, do whatever I want. Um, I can set request per second if I want on this too, but what if I want to set, I just want to be able to call the latest blocks, the last 100 latest blocks. Uh, so what this means is like from the, uh, there's some docs here, from the uh, latest block number, at the block number, uh, I can only call from minus 100 to uh, the latest block number, but uh, I can call the latest blocks. Uh, let's say the latest block is 1,000. I can call 90 or uh, 900 to uh, 1,000 or above uh, if there's on, if there's blocks ahead of that. Um, so let's go here. Let's grab. Let me refresh. Let's grab the latest block number. And I'm going to send at get logs. For the latest block number. Okay, life's good. I got uh, I got a successful response. Um, but let's go back in time. I will just do this to be safe. 100 or so blocks, which should be well before the limit now. And I send that and block by a quick node endpoint armor, block number out of specific range. So in addition to latest blocks, you can also set min block number and max block number. Um, you can set, you know, a range of block numbers. So, so like the minimum block number could be 17 million, max block number could be 18 million, and you can just query uh, blocks within that range. Uh, so that's gonna be like a static uh, set one and latest box is more dynamic. It's going to use the latest block number uh, from the actual chain. Oh, and I should mention this supports any RPC chain. So all RPC chains are supported. There's a few that are HTTP uh, or, or like REST uh, API based, uh, but RPC chains are supported. So there's another, there's another actual global setting I can set called visitor rate limits. Um, and this one's a little hard to demo with curl because it uses browser uh, information. Um, this is gonna be, if I'm using, uh, you know, my URL, I'm using it in, in John swap. And I, uh, I only want to, I wanna say for each unique visitor to my website, uh, only allow them to do three requests per second. And by the way, this is all validated. So if you, uh, try to submit something incorrect, it's going to yell at you. Um, so visitor right ones, request per second three, that's going to say for each unique visitor to my website, uh, they can only send three requests per second. All right, I, that is most of it. There's another, there's a couple more specific um, methods that you can add or method specific configurations. Another one is at the call. There's a contract allow list. Uh, this works kind of similar. Oh, we already have this functionality actually in the in the uh, traditional dashboard. Um, but you can set a contract allow list and say I I only want to be able to call this contract with at the call. Uh, so a lot of times a website will just interact with one contract, and it doesn't really make sense to. Uh, to allow it to just call any 
any contract. So I think this is all I got to submit. Cool, so that's the Loopy Donuts contract here. Uh, I can call that. And let's just say I change this. I'm going to change it to like a random contract here. And it's going to say contract is not allowed here. So. so yeah, that pretty much sums it up. We got global rate limits. We got uh, visitor rate limits, um, individual visitors to a website. Uh, we got a, a method allow list. Um, you can either say a method is enabled, or you can set individual requests per second. Uh, and then you have some specific configuration like latest box 100 for F get logs, F call. Um, and then I should mention this also, we also have this latest box and min uh, max block number for get slot in Solana. Uh, and we can add uh, support for more methods with like F get logs and F get block by number. Um, have this block limiting configuration, but uh, we, we definitely want to add a lot more of these method specific configurations. And that's it. Thank you. So this is how you can secure your RPC endpoints using endpoint armor. If you prefer a return version, check it out in the description below.